Hi, everyone. So uh, almost 100 years ago, Dr. William Mayo stated that there was no excuse to learn on the patient. And little has changed over the last 100 years. Um, surgeons do train on cadaveric tissue, but there is problems with cadaveric tissue. Um, one of the biggest ones is cost. It's not regulated. Um, the facilities to house this tissue is extremely expensive, and a lot of the tissue isn't suitable for surgical simulation. Um, it's not available all over the world, and certain disciplines like pediatrics have no available cadaveric tissue. Our solution was to create a polymer that combined with 3D printing to make surgical simulators that you could use from start to finish. Um, they're a fraction of the cost of cadaveric tissue. They don't require the specialized facilities, and uh, they take minutes to assemble. Um, so why now? So resident surgical experience is on the decline because there is limited tissue and limited facilities for this tissue, and that's created a rise in the U.S. simulation market. Uh, it's expected to grow about a half a billion dollars in the next um, five to seven years, and we feel like we could capture a good portion of that. Um, we have validated this product with multiple surgeons from all over the world, and uh, it does perform at the same level of cadaveric tissue. Um, our team is composed of uh, material scientists, 3D printing specialists, and we have three senior neurosurgeons who have validated a lot of our prototypes and continue to establish industry contacts. Um, in the future, we look to expand this not only to neurosurgery in the brain, but also to all the other organ systems of the body. Thank you. We're actually looking to partner the IP with a manufacturing company that can produce this on the same level, or on a, on a large scale, because we're, we're not manufacturers. Um, a lot of them use hydrogels, which is a freeze-thaw technique that takes a long time to replicate, so they're expensive, and they can't compete with cadaveric tissue prices. Um, and other ones use silicone, which you can't use electric cautery on, and they, they can't ultrasound or, or shoot fluor on those. And ours can do both of that, or all of that. Yeah, we're currently in discussions with Mayo Ventures about getting it secure. So it's, I think, almost done as far as securing a patent. So as you do this and, and uh, as you're thinking about IP position, do you have a sense of what that would look like? I mean, 3D printing is something that uh, obviously everyone's doing. It's the proprietary polymer that we're going to patent. So. Um, yeah, it's literally pennies on the dollar. A lot of these are um, organic comp uh, components that are, that are very cheap. And basically we have the, the 3D printing obviously is expensive, but if you use just a, we're using a, a very cheap FDM printer. Uh, we've done all this for pennies on the dollar, so. Um, as far as simulation and, and education and surgical training, I think it's huge. So um, they've projected that it's supposed to grow close to a billion dollars, and we feel like surgical simulation would be about half of that, so close to a half a billion dollars. And it would save institutions tons of money. Obviously, they won't need the facilities. You can, you can set these trainers on the physician's coffee table if you wanted to.